Hello. Um, I kind of got some news about the channel. YouTube, uh, crap was goofing up on me again, and I had to change the channel name. Instead of that CAE chirp it was before, it is now Chirpy's Tinkerings. That seems more fitting to what I do. Uh, anyways, I've been working on this, just to kill time. If you've seen my Ford Boys videos, you probably recognize what it is. Or, somewhat of it. It will be a small version of a, a spin indexer. The It'll have a clamping part in here, like... Um, uh, like Double Boost had for his spin indexer he made a while back. But instead of pulling up, it will clamp together to lock it. Um, I don't like the idea of having it going in right at the top and going into the shaft. Because that seems like it would burr the hell out of the shaft. So I figured this would be a better... Yeah. The way these work... They have usually 11 or 10 holes on here, labeled 0 through 9. They are 11 degrees apart, and a disc on here goes that is 10 degrees apart that has 36 holes. When you take an index, the stuff, um, you'll take the 11 degree holes, like first. One is just your zero, second one is 11, 22, 33, 44, so on and so on. So if you move the hole over, or you want to index like 54, you would have put it in, line the five up with zero, and then move it just a hair until the four lines up and put a pin in it because it will shift it over four degrees. So you can actually get um, 360 hole, or yeah, 360 degrees out of 36 holes. You can also make custom plates and stuff for this thing. I wanted this for the shaper, so I can take and do little tidbit pieces and stuff, like cutting like lathe keys and such like that, and hex heads on bolts or something that I'm trying to make. Just little random tidbits. I'll probably have a 7 8 inch shaft in the thing. Um, I think that's it for that. I don't know when I'm going to get around to doing the, the this one. I've been working on it, but it's literally six degrees outside right now, and everything is locked up and frozen, so the lathe's not getting worked on for a while. Um, I found this. It is a part from a uh, windshield wiper motor. The electronics and the motor has been removed but it, I was going to use it for an indexing table since it's pretty much a worm gear and stuff but after calculating it out it's 1 to 55 or 55 to 1 gear ratio which if you try calculating that out for plates and stuff it's a freaking nightmare to do it's just every one you find is decimal points except for 36 I think in 11 or I think even 11 is decimal points um yeah I can't even just think about making the dividing table out of this but it's just not gonna work so yeah I'll probably just tinker with the spin indexer for now and that should be it. 
Uh, sorry if the channel name change is confusing or anything. Um, it's I didn't have a choice. It just screwed up on me, and Google was showing all kinds of stupid characters and everything else for my name, and was every time I tried to change it, it would boot me out. So I just finally changed it to that, and it's gone stable now. So we'll see how it holds up. Um, yeah. I figured with me just tinkering around most of the time, Chirpy's tinkerings sounds a lot better. Okay, I found this. I figured I'd show this to explain how the spin indexer works. Um, I don't know if you can see through it, but as I'm rotating it just slightly, you can see one hole will start to line up with the other just by moving one degree. This is 0, 11, 22, 33, the degrees off from this one. So move it this one plus you could take and do the 10 degrees, which is pretty easy, or do the Move it just slightly and it'll Yeah, it doesn't take much movement, but you could see how it works. Same principle is done with the spin indexer. I printed these on a three D printer just to act as a teaching aid or guide for figuring out how this thing actually works. So, that's all.